Good evening, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Mage of the Midland Marsh here. And today I like would like to go over my Wilhelm EDH deck. I call this deck Wilhelm Ate My Neighbors. It's nothing fancy. It's a zombie aggro deck. As you'll see soon enough. So we start off with our commander. Good old Wilhelm. Perfect sack outlet, card draw engine, Demir color. Does everything I need him to do for to lead this army. Now, alongside him is a few other legendaries from uh, our history here. We've got Liliana, Death's Majesty. You gotta love that card. Creates a bunch of zombie bodies. We love that. Jossie Vess. I mean, what's not to love about Jossie Vess? Always pay the kicker for him. Like, that's the only reason why I even have him in here. It's not because he's a four drop. It's because I, I want that quick kicker. Eight, I mean, eight token zombies is just awesome. We've got Narfi, the Betrayer King. I mean, just another good, good anthem. Anthem creature for zombies. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm feeling a little under the weather today. I didn't want to... Uh, never mind, we'll just get off it. Uh... Cool caller Giso. Gotta love another sack outlet for zombies. Especially with some of the other nasty, nasty tricks we can do with sacking creatures in this deck. We have foiled showcase of a Geralf. Makes all your zombies fly. Sack, another sack outlet creature too. And then we get Giso and Geralf together. Mill, play cards from the graveyard once a turn. It's a fun card. We have Jadar, the ghoul caller of a uh, Nefalia. Nefalia? Yeah, Nefalia. Anyway, yeah, just uh, at the end of every turn, if I don't have a 2-2 uh, two -two decayed zombie, he's going to give me one. And I've got car a card in here that does some fun stuff with those decayed zombies. You'll see it soon enough. Part of a... Uh, Another graveyard recursion character. We get uh, the Ebon, Ebon Death Direco Witch. It's a fun little creature to play. Just keep on bringing them back. Uh, this guy is actually one of two cards for an infinite combo in my deck. Uh, you, I Yeah, I don't think I need to explain it. Yeah. Uh, he just keep. You'll see it when the other card pops up soon enough. But yeah. He's just never going to stay. He's never... I have him in this deck specifically so he never comes out into play. <laughs> you'll you'll understand. Uh, Blood Artist. Yeah, it's cheap damage. And with the sack, all the sack outlets in here, it seemed like the right card to throw in. Even if it's not on flavor because it's a vampire. However, I've got a Headless Rider coming in. Headless Rider is going to replace this. And we'll take that out. But for now, yeah, we're going to leave it in there. Uh, I actually tried running the can the zombie cannon fodder deck on uh, the pre-release for Crimson Vow. And, yeah, I did not do good. I believe I came in 36th out of 42 people. Was not a good, was not a good show. <laughs> um yeah, I had like five five diagraph zombies or whatever. The, the one that one thirteen creature zombie. Yeah, I had five of them in that deck, it, and it just did not work out in my favor. I can never get it to flip. But maybe in commander, it'd be easier to do it. So actually, behind him are all the zombies I put in here that are that, that would work with his trigger with the. Uh, but the power uh, being blessed in the, their toughness to make them flip. So, you know, Cleaver Scab, what's, wh what's better than one zombie? Killing it upon bringing it out and making two of them. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a great creature. I just, I just wish you didn't have to tap it so you could do it multiple times a turn. But you can't have everything. <clears throat> He's uh, another, we got two seven Pontiff of Blight. Basically, yeah, he, he just gives everybody extort. It's just easy, cheap way to gain life and make enemies at the table. I don't see too many people playing zombie tribal using this guy. And I'm actually kind of shocked by that, because I think it's surprisingly a really good zombie. Uh, Raving Dead has to attack every turn if possible, but if uh, 
he deals damage to a combat player. At the end of that turn, that player loses, what is it, half their life rounded down. Like, give this guy a rogue passage. What are you, what are you do, waiting for? You know? Ha <laughs> ha, Gary. No explanation needed. Death Tyrant. Not, okay, not on flavor for being a zombie, but he does generate zombie tokens, which is why I threw him in here. Oh, the classic zombie lord, 4th edition. Um, I wish he was classified as a zombie and not a lord, but hey, you know, he does what he needs to do. He regenerates all my zombies and gives them swamp walk. No Urborg in this deck, though, unfortunately. Now, remember I was saying about all those decayed zombies earlier? Here's the guy. Here's the magic man, the poppet stitcher. Three decay, or just three token creatures, and you get to flip them. And he, then he takes all your 2-2 two, two decades and makes them 3-3, three, three and then makes them lose the decayed. And he becomes a uh, an artifact instead of a human. Great card for a zombie deck. Uh, Liliana's devotee. Yeah, sure, I know, he's not, a, no, he's not a zombie, but he's a zombie anthem card. Why not keep him in here, right? Uh, Tainted Adversary. Um, I like the guy, personally. This, If you can get him out in the late game, he's a lot of fun, depending on how much mana you have to spare. That's why I wish I had a Phyrexian Altar for this deck. Could do this a lot of times if that were the case. But yeah, you know, you cast him for his two drop, but then you can keep paying his uh, the two black, two and one black for to keep bringing out zombie tokens. It's great. Uh, Blood Stitcher Scob, yeah, just another uh, zombie anthem creature. Lord of the Accursed, another zombie anthem creature. Um, this is actually, I think, one of the most surprising commons from Crimson Vow. It it's so common of it's a common card apparently. Yet, I've only ever gotten one. I love this friggin' zombie bear. So much fun to play with. Especially, get him out in the early game. He's a lot of fun. And does it for the creatures that all have the power and toughness that require the, uh, the, restri uh, the, the ability for the catapult fodder. Sorry, tongue-tied. <laughs> All right, now these are just the rest of the crew in the the rest of the nasties in this deck. If you're gonna have a zombie deck, you gotta have Grave Crawler. Play it from the graveyard as long as you have a zombie out here. Um, this guy is just a throwaway zombie. I don't know. I'm I've got a bunch of different zombies I could throw in here to replace this guy, and I'm thinking about it, but. I just wanted a zombie kraken because I just think the concept of a zombie kraken is kind of cool. Um. Gem Palm Polluter. Great way to do direct damage if you have a crap ton of zombies out. Love the guy. Always, almost always pay the cycling for it. And then, you know, if you have Gisa and Garolf out, you can just bring them back out and to play from the graveyard. Uh, yeah, your Death Baron. Just another another ramp, uh, Anthem Ramper. Liliana's Reaver. Yeah, I tried to put in, like, everything that had to do with Liliana, except... Liliana, or uh, the only thing I didn't throw in was the go the Liliana Shade, because why would I? It's not a shade deck. But yeah, another zombie. Uh, Biograph Captain. Well, um, yeah, he, I get a more da bonus direct damage with this guy. And he's another ramper. What's not to love? Uh, Death Priest uh, Miracool. Another another anthem card, and he generates a uh, black skeleton tokens, which it, it works. Undead auger, another punishment card, creature card. I should, yeah, punishment creature card. Um, cemetery reaper. No, it's an interesting. I think I just keep him in here for his anthem effect more than his uh paid ability. Not a big fan of exiling my own creatures. Not when I have ways to keep casting them from the graveyard, you know? Fleshbag Marauder. Once again, another one of those zombie decks. You should have this in every zombie deck. Um, just easy, gets rid of something real quick, right from the get-go. What's not to love about it? Yet another zombie <laughs> zombie ramper. 
Yeah, Death t uh, Tomb Tyrant. Really fun guy. Fun to play with. I and this is this is the uh, the uh, mythic rare from Adventures in the Forgotten Realms that I got so many of. I have six of these damn things. So I was like, you know what? I might as well use the white. Why not? Um, I don't think it's particularly that great, but you know what? It's a unique zombie. Why not throw them in? <clears throat> this is the one I'm excited about. Once again, another one of those uh, zombies I never see anybody play. I want a I, I want a gigantic zombie vampire bat flying around, you know. Especially one that has it's flying. It's got a life link. If you pay his kicker cost, he's even bigger. I mean, what's not to love? A, zo a zombie. It's a menace. And then we got a uh, Graf Reaver. Fun card. Cheap, easy, comes out, does a little bit of damage to me, but you know what? I got ways to sack it, right? And make it good. Um, the Keru Dead Dreadmaw. Interesting, it's a, just, it's more of a zombie wall than anything, but it's a zombie alligator. But, you know, the Forlorn Sudama. Uh, this was a card that I was debating whether or not to even throw in, but you know what? I decided if I can keep getting it to untap, and paying that uh, ma mana cost at the bottom of the card. Just keep generating zombies with her. It's a great zombie. You gotta have one of these. Diagraph Colossus. Just, if you have a lot of zombies in your graveyard, the more he's just gonna benefit when you cast him. Um, Dungeon Crawler. Um, works well with because of the Acerac combo. So, and he's, he's basically a gra uh, grave crawler, but you got to complete dungeons to bring him back. And that's easy enough to do. Alright, sorcery spells. Not too many, only three. Ghoul's Night Out. What's better than when you have a zombie army and you're killing everything? Stealing your opponent's creatures from their graveyards and making them zombies under your own army. What's better than that, guys? Really, what's better when you're playing a zombie aggro? I, I mean, speaking of aggro, Army of the Damned, bring out 13 zombie to two two zombie tokens. Just nasty, nasty card. The only thing that would make this card even better is if it had Flash on it. I know I could get a Videlkin Ori to throw in this deck. Part of me thinks I should. Because what's better than zombies is zombies f acting fast. Ch you know, the changing of becoming a van. Yeah, anyway. Uh, Wake the Dead. Just a nice little recursion card in case I need to get something out of the graveyard. To, and I don't have Gisa and Geralt out. Um, got our Dark Salvation. Just another way to... Create a bunch of 2 2 zombie tokens and then destroy a bunch of creatures in the process. And then on top of that, a zombie apocalypse. So, what's better than bringing out, destroying every creature, or was it every human? Yeah. Destroy yeah, all human creatures and then bring back all zombie cards uh, into play. Enchantment. Now, this is where I'm a little concerned with my this deck because it's enchantment happy. You'll see why here in a second. Raider Spoils. Just another great, it's an Anthem card. Get lets me get some extra draws in at the cost of life. It's fine. Classic, well it's not classic Bad Moon, but Bad Moon. But this one's going to affect the entire board state, not just mine. So this is one I've got to be careful with. If I'm playing against people that are using black, I may not want to cast that card. Uh, Liliana's Mastery, all another ramper or a ramper anthem card, and it creates two tokens zombies uh, when it's brought out in the play. Just quick cheat bodies, nothing wrong with that. Open the graves, so it's basically whenever I'm not whenever one of my zombies die, create a two two token zombie. <laughs> uh, military intelligence. Uh, it, I figure a, this card would encourage me to attack with a lot of creatures every turn and get something out of the effort just for attacking, regardless whether or not the attacks go through. So, Military Intelligence, I thought that'd be a good one to throw in there. 
Uh, Secrets of the Dead, because this card I figured paired well with uh, Geralt and Gisa let me cast one thing from the graveyard every turn. Why not? Could do that, get the draw on top of it. And here's the card that makes the Acerac combo and, frankly, the Gravecrawler combo worth the while, worth everything. So the Rooftop Storm. All these zombies cost zero to cost. Do you know how much of a boon that is in a zombie deck? Um, and I figure you got to have a Dictate of Erebos in it. I've got, like, six of these things, six, seven Dictates. They, uh, it's one of my favorite black spells. It's just Punishment. Especially with a deck like this where if I'm not killing my own creatures, sacking them for card draw or whatever, you know, they're attacking and or I'm getting attacked and everybody's paying the price for attacking me. So, yeah. And then Palace Siege. I'm surprised that more people don't play with this either. Uh, I mean, it's either a great way to keep bringing a creature from the graveyard to, in the... Uh, my hand every turn, or I'm constantly dealing, or every turn I'm dealing two damage to everybody and gaining two life. It's a great, I don't know, I think it's a good political card. Get some little, uh, little extra spice on the board, I think. Now, in terms of artifacts and ramp, not too much. Only three in this deck. Uh, I'm only running, uh, or four, I'm sorry. Uh, Talisman of Dominance, because why not? We got an arcane signet, a soul ring, and the interesting one here is the crowded crypt. It uh, gives me black mana, and also give upon sacrificing it, it gives me a bunch of zombie tokens. Once again, on flavor for the deck. All of these are just snow covered swamps. I figure for Narfi, Betrayer King, I better use as many snow-covered swamps as I still had left over from my Ice Age days. Uh, I didn't throw too many regular swamps, and I think I've only got like, yeah, like six or seven regular swamps in there. Nothing too major. Uh, islands, like I said, just, once again, it's like, yeah, six, six islands, I think. You... Now, unique lands. We are running in an exotic. Most of these are the uh, lands, I believe, that came with the pre-con, too. Uh, if they have that little corner in it, uh, that little shield icon in the corner, I'm going to skip them. It was ch Choked Estuary. Uh, yeah, Demir Aqueduct. Get a uh, Command Tower. Ah, uh, Rogue's Passage. Yeah, see, this is for the Raving Dead, because... Yeah, like I said, that ha takes them down to half damage instantly. It's just, you, why not g get it every time, you know? Uh, Path of Ancestry, why not? Especially, you know, if I'm doing that with zombies, works well. Uh, Dark Water Catacombs. Yeah. You know, unclaimed Territory. Myriad Landscape, Bajuka Bog, Tainted Isle, uh, Temple of Deceit, and a Sunken Hollow. And that, ladies, gentlemen, friends, fellow spell slingers, and everybody in between and unsaid, that is my Wilhelm Zombie EDH deck. I hope you enjoyed, and I... Hope you stay tuned for the next deck. I don't have an Easter egg in this video for my next deck. I, I was going to show off. Um, I, I actually have a couple of Lego minifigures. One, I custom made ones. Uh, one is of Wilhel and the other one is of the Headless Rider. And the third one I made is actually for who I wanted to use for my next deck. I wanted to show off. But... I didn't do it, I'm sorry, but that's going to be something to look out for in my very limited backgrounds, foregrounds, whatever. You're uh, going to want to look around because I might occasionally slip in a little Easter egg for what the next deck's going to be about. But until then, everybody, keep slinging spells, keep having fun, stay safe, stay healthy, be excellent to each other, because we are just getting started.